Hi, I'm Scott Baranato, Senior Editor with the HBR Channel. Today I'm joined by Sandy Pentland, Professor at MIT's Media Lab, and the inventor of the technology I'm wearing here, which measures patterns of communication and could revolutionize our understanding of how people interact. Sandy, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. So let's talk about this badge I'm wearing. It's called a sociometric badge. What does this badge do? Well, it pays attention to your body language, uh, who you talk to, where you talk to them. It's designed to measure uh, the patterns of communication within an organization and how people speak to each other. But it doesn't collect any information about the content of the communication. So how, how can you tell just by looking at this data what is sort of a good conversation or a bad conversation, or can you tell that? Well, you can tell uh, amazing amounts without listening to the content. And the surprising thing is, is if you just look at those patterns of, or, of communication, together with sort of the energy behind the, the communication, you can account for 50% of the variation between poorly performing groups and high performing groups. So 50% might not sound like much, but what that means is that it accounts for more than everything else put together. And you don't measure it today. <laughs> and study after study shows that the most important, delicate, complex stuff happens face to face or sometimes over the phone. It's not email, it's not written documents. Which means that in every organization on earth, you don't know what's happening to your complex data. What this does is this gives you those hard numbers, gives you a graphic that shows you how your group is, is doing, and that lets you ask, is this really the way we want our group to be? So this, this is where I think it might get creepy for some people, is you can look at this data, you can never have met the people wearing these badges, right. and predict with some reasonable accuracy the effectiveness of, say, a team. Absolutely, but it's not actually that spooky. If you think about it, you know, you can stand outside a room and just listen to the pattern of communication of a team and tell whether they're all falling asleep or whether they're really excited. And that's what we're measuring is that, that sense of are things clicking or are they not clicking? So that sense of buzz, that sense that we're getting a lot done, this team is really clicking on all cylinders, you're saying that's a real thing. That's not just a... It's a real thing that you can measure and put numbers on. And because you can do that, you can also put dollar signs on them. You can say, this team is being this productive in terms of dollars. This team is being a different amount productive in terms of dollars. So you can actually go in and look at the patterns of communication and relate them to not just productivity, but creative output also. So have you taken this data at all and looked and seen sort of what I would call the optimal communicator? Not surprisingly, yes, we found that in the data. We looked, for instance, at a mixer just before people began a one-week intensive exercise to put together business plans, and we found that there was one type of person that predicted the success of the team at the end of the week, and it's something we call a charismatic connector. So it's, it's a person who goes around and talks to everybody and listens to them, asks them questions. They sort of drive the conversation because they're saying, what do you do? Oh, really? That's interesting. Tell me about it. And then politely and, and appropriately move on to the next person. So they're working the room, but they're not working the room to collect cards or something like that. They're working the room to collect information. And when you get a lot of those people on the team, the team does well. So you've deployed these badges in team settings, small team settings, large team settings. Uh, have you deployed them sort of company-wide, and can you imagine an application where you could actually collect data on an entire organization and how it communicates. Yeah, well, we've done that. We've actually deployed over an entire sort of uh, medium-sized startup, 100-odd people, uh, for a month. And you can actually make a little dashboard that shows, you know, are people communicating enough? Are they communicating with their team enough that the team is on the same page? Are they harvesting information and coordinating with the other people? And you just see it on the top of your computer there. It just shows those little displays, and you can adjust your behavior as a consequence. Can you imagine a scenario in which you uh, integrate this kind of data and feedback into the operations of an organization? Sure, yeah. Um, we've done things with call centers, for instance, where uh, they've changed the break structure and found that, that as a result of people talking to each other more, they got far greater productivity out of the call center workers 
We've done it in creative groups where sometimes very simple things like changing the lunch tables to make them longer so people sit together that don't know each other has dramatic effects on creative output. How is this technology going to develop even further and what can you imagine doing with this technology in the future? Well, the next generation or two of this will actually just be like the name tags that everybody wears already. There'll be circuitry in there, but you won't even know that it's there. But you can imagine, and I expect to see, that entire organizations will use them, and you'll quite literally have a dashboard that shows how the patterns of communication are, are going today. It's not a really embarrassing thing for people, because it's not about your words or whether you're a good guy or a bad guy. You're just looking at the flow of ideas around the organization and trying to make sure that it's a good flow. Sandy, thank you very much. My pleasure.